Hello, welcome back to Learn Physics. In today's topic, we are continuing with our wave optics portion. Okay, so in here in wave optics, last class we learned about the interference, theory behind the interference and the constructive and destructive interference patterns we learned. Isn't it? What are the conditions to obtain the constructive interference and destructive interference? And there that means path difference and phase difference in both the cases how it will be that one we learned. Today we are going to find out the expression for fringe width. Okay. So expression for fringe width. Expression for fringe width. So how we can find out the fringe width? For that first I should consider the Young's double slit experiment. Okay, In that we should consider a source. From the source I am considering the two sources of light. So then it will be monochromatic isn't it? So here a source of light is here and I am considering two slits S1 and S2 ok sources almost centered to this one like this I am considering these two slits are at a distance small letter d apart I am keeping a screen here which is at a distance capital letter D so from here also light waves will be coming out from here also light waves will be coming out so what will be uh, formed in the on the screen yes alternate dark and bright fringes will be observed so last class we in last video we finished all the theory portions and how it will be observing that and all we learned isn't it so center fringe will be a bright fringe i'm representing it as c it will be a bright fridge. So alternate dark and bright fringes will be forming and on the both the sides. All the bright fringes will be of equal intensity. Dark fringe means it will be completely dark. Okay. So this is the center fringe. Central fringe will always be a bright fridge. So here I am considering a point P here. So, which is at a distance x. Okay. So, I am considering from S1 here a point E and here a point F. We are going to find out the fringe width. Distance between two consecutive bright fringe or dark fringe as called as fringe width. Bright fringe is distance between two nearby bright fringes or nearby dark fringes that what we are going to find out so first i am considering the point p what will be the path difference between these two between the waves which are coming from s1 and s2 to p path difference so i am considering a point like this s1 p s2 p Path length is S1P, here S2P. So, I am going to find out S2P minus S1P. How I can find out S2P minus S1P? So, for that, first I should find out S2P. Here, while I am considering, for S2P, first I should consider the triangle S2FP. It's a right angle, the triangle, right? So, I can write it as S2P will be equal to root of S2F square minus PF square. What is this PF? So, S is at the center, I told. This is at a distance D. So, each distance, these distance will be D by 2. This also D by 2. So, what will be PF? X plus d by 2. So I can write it as root of s2f square. s2f means what is this s2f? d square minus x plus d by 2 the whole square. Okay. Now 
what is S1P in the same way while we are representing. So here for S1P I will consider the triangle S1EP. So S1P will be equal to square root of S1E square. So we are considering the hypotenuse. While we are considering the hypotenuse it should be plus. Okay then D square plus. What is that? PE. What is PE? This much is E and here it is D by 2. So what will be this much? X minus D by 2. X minus D by 2 the whole square. Okay. Now our aim is to find out S2P minus S1P right. So here I can apply the binomial expansion for these two. For first one and second one I am applying the binomial expansion. So S2P equals square root. So that one I can write it as D square plus X plus D by 2 the whole square. The whole power 1 by 2 I can write like. Isn't it? So d square plus x plus d by 2 the whole square. From this I am taking d square outside. 1 plus x plus d by 2 the whole square divided by d square the whole power 1 by 2. Okay. d square while I am taking it outside. Inside outside the square root it will be d dividing with the d. Now d into 1 plus x the whole power n. 1 plus n x. So 1 plus x plus d by 2 the whole square divided by 2 d square. 1 plus n x. Okay. The same way S1P equals d into 1 plus x minus d by 2 the whole square divided by 2 d square the whole power 1 by 2 whole power 1 by 2 ok now S2P minus S1P S2P minus S1P equals d into this S2P and this is S1P D is common. This 1 plus nx only we got here. So the square root is not required. 1 plus x the whole power n equals 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 into divided by 1 into 2 into x square. So higher powers of x we are neglecting. Why we are neglecting higher powers of x? Because this is x. D is a large term. So while we are taking the squares, since larger term is in the denominator, we are not considering that one. So this one higher powers of x we are neglecting. So here we will get it as 1 plus nx. Okay. So while we are doing this one, how we will be getting 1 minus 1, 0. x plus d by 2 the whole square minus x minus d by 2 the whole square divided by 2 d square. This one these two will get cancelled. So the rest of the things are like this. So here d and d will get cancelled. 1 by 2 d. What is a plus b the whole square minus a minus b the whole square? It is a plus b the whole square minus a minus b the whole square. a square plus b square cancel. Here it is 2ab minus minus 2ab. So it will become 4ab you will get. Okay. So same way here we can write it as 4 into a into b. So you will get it as 1 by 2d into 2xd. 
So final answer you will get it as XD divided by capital D. So the path difference S2P minus S1P equals X into small letter D divided by capital letter D. All these are mathematical calculations only. No other confusions and all. You should do two or three times. You should write down and study. Then you will understand. Okay. XD divided by capital D. Now we are taking the constructive interference. Okay. Constructive interference. So we took a random point P and we were finding out the path difference at that point. For the constructive interference, what is the condition of path difference? S2P minus N, S1P equals N lambda. So that is X D divided by capital D. So here I am finding out Xn is equal to N lambda capital D divided by small d. This is X. Isn't it? So, what will be the path difference here? This is for n the fringe, n lambda capital D divided by D. For n plus 1 the fringe, how it will be? n plus 1 into lambda capital D divided by small d. Okay, so what will be the difference between xn plus 1 minus xn? What will be this path difference here? It will be lambda capital D divided by small d. N lambda capital D divided by small d will get cancelled. Only lambda capital D by small d will exist. So this is the condition for fringe width. If I am taking a destructive interference, how I will get the destructive interference? This path difference is equal to N plus half into lambda. That was the path difference for destructive interference, isn't it? So you will get it as XD divided by capital D. So while we are finding out this one, you will get it as N plus half into lambda capital D divided by small d. The same way you can find out the fringe width will be same. So the fringe width is depending on width of the fringes, depending on this lambda capital D and small d. Okay, capital D is the distance between the source and coherent sources and the screen. Small letter d is distance between the, yes, this, this is the distance between the slits. These small d is the distance between the slits and capital D is the distance between the slits and the screen. Okay, so angular separation while we are considering. So if we are considering the angular separation, okay, angular separation while we are considering how we will get. See, if this is the path difference that is lambda capital D divided by small d. So this is the bright fringe and this is the bright fringe. What will be the angular separation between these two fringes? How we can find out angle equals arc by radius if we are finding out lambda by capital D. It will be of the order of lambda by capital D. Okay, this is the angular separation. So we got the fringe width as fringe width equals lambda capital D divided by small d. This is the fringe width beta. Lambda capital D divided by small d. It will be same for both dark and bright fringes. It will be same for dark and bright fringes. Fringe width equals lambda capital D divided by small d. So the angular separation. Angular separation is given by lambda by small d. This is the angular separation. And one more condition is there. It should yes, for the interference pattern to obtain. S by capital S. S is the dimension of the source. And capital S is the distance of the source from the slits. That should be less than the angular separation. Okay. This is the size of the source and distance between the slits to the source. That is capital S. So this should be less than lambda capital lambda divided by small d, less than the angular separation. So here 
and all the dark and bright fringes are of same width width of all the dark fringes and all the bright fringes are same and intensity maximum intensity is given by a plus b the whole square and the minimum intensity is given by a minus b the whole square these are the main things which you should remember in the case of interference maximum intensity is a plus b the whole square and minimum intensity is a minus b the whole square okay so the we will be taking the square of the amplitude but all, after all the calculation we will be getting the maximum intensity and minimum intensity in this manner if both are of same amplitude minimum intensity will be zero if and maximum intensity will be doubled okay 4i0 that and all we uh, derived already isn't it so next in your textbook one solved question is there second question after the interference so that is very important actually many time many questions will be asked uh, relating to that uh, solved example that also i will explain you once usually i'll tell the children to read that so no one will be reading so i thought i will give an idea about that question and answer so it will be helpful for you okay so that is in page number 366 what is the effect on interference fringes in a young's double slit experiment due to each of the following operations screen is moved away from the plane of slits if screen is moved away from the plane of slits what will happen see screen is moved away from the slits capital d so fringe width will be increasing capital d is increasing this is slit and this is screen if this is increasing what will happen fringe width will be increasing okay so that is uh, the angular separation the fringe width will be increasing as capital d increases thus next is the source is replaced by another source of shorter wavelength okay so wavelength is decreasing what will happen to beta beta also will decrease fringe width will decrease if we are decreasing lambda increasing the beta will increase fringe width that is size of each bright fringe and dark fringe will increase if we are decreasing lambda what will happen beta also will decrease so the next one the separation between the two slits is increased see separation between the slits is increasing d is increasing what will happen to beta beta will decrease size of the fringes will be decreasing then the next one is the source slit is moved closer to the double slit pair the so source of slit which is the source of slit this is the source which is coming very much closer what will happen if this is coming closer s by s s is small s is small means this will be more value so whether interference pattern will obtain no for the interference pattern should obtain means s by s should be less than lambda by d okay if it is very coming very closer to each other what will happen this will become a larger value so chances are there interference fringes won't be obtaining okay so the next one is the width of the source slit is increased so width of the source slit is increased so this is increasing what will happen lambda it will be this value will become more so what will happen the interference fringes may not be obtained because if it is coming less than lambda by d so this should be this is one of the condition to obtain the interference fringes okay then next is monochromatic source is replaced by a source of white light what will happen instead of a monochromatic source if i am using a white light then see lambda capital d divided by small d so as lambda we know violet indigo blue green yellow orange red in that red is having maximum wavelength so if it has wavelength this maximum what will happen beta will be central fringe first i am considering the central bright fringe so it will be red in color having large beta 
okay then as it is increasing what will happen as it is going side to side what will happen see beta will be oh, it's in mixing with the, the rest of the colors so you can observe more blue in color you will be obtaining you will be observing and all the positions of the central fringe will be different also so you will be getting the different colors all the vibrant colors you can observe in that uh, screen okay so understood these as uh, these are the important so this is very important one you should understand so only these formulas if you are understanding and the conditions of interference pattern which i explained yesterday in last video okay so that also you should uh, check this is what about the interference fringes it's very important portion in next class i'll be continuing with the diffraction okay so i hope all of you understood all those things and if you like the channel please don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching bye